Hello and welcome back. For this video we're going to show you the basics of factoring that involves monomials, binomials, and grouping. First of all, factoring is a form of division. Its process will undo the distributive property. If you've ever simplified a fraction before, then you are essentially factoring. So let me show you how that works. If we have the fraction 8 twentieths, the numerator can be rewritten as 2 times 4 so basically you've taken this 8 and turned it into the factors of 2 and 4. Remember factors are numbers to be multiplied. So the bottom number would come out to 5 times 4. So you factored 20 into 5 times 4. We're just turning it into a multiplication and we then simplified the 4's which will leave us with a 2 over 5. So the process that we did going from this to this was called factoring. As I've already said, factors are items to be multiplied, so you won't actually have factors until you have nothing but multiplications left over. If you look down here at the bottom, you can see that we have a multiplication right here between this factor and that factor, and nobody said that a factor had to be a monomial, it could be a binomial, so on the right hand side we have a binomial. To factor completely, you must first find the greatest common monomial or common binomial fact. So let's take a look at this binomial. First thing you want to do is look at the numbers themselves, the coefficients, and what is the greatest common factor of the 12 and the 15. And it appears to be a 3, so what we're going to do is take a 3, put it down there, and we're going to set some parentheses here, because we're going to multiply that. And then we look at the variable part of our terms. We have an a squared and an a to the first, and the greatest common that they have there, the greatest common factor would be an a. Remember, the a squared is really an a to the first times an a to a first. So they only have an a to the first in common. So we're going to bring an a to the first outside, which we don't really need that first power there. We're just going to leave it as just a. And what's left over inside is the division of each of these two terms divided by the 3a. So 12 divided by 3 leaves you with the 4. a to the second divided by a to the first leaves you with a, bring down our plus sign, and 15 divided by 3 is going to give us 5, and a to the first divided by a to the first is just 1, and 1 times 5 is just 5. So you can see how we get our two factors, 3a and 4a plus 5, which we had on the previous slide. Example 1, we have a binomial, and we want to take a look at uh, the first coefficients of each, and they have a 7 and 35, so that would be a 7, so they have a 7 in common. Then we'll take a look at the variable components. Uh, one of them has a w to the fifth, and the other one has a w to the second. So the most you can divide out of each one simultaneously would be a w to the second. So it's always going to be the smaller exponent. Then we can set up our parentheses, and we'll just go back and basically pretend we're taking this first number and dividing by w to the second, 7w second, and this one right here and dividing by 7w to the second. And after we divide that, that's what goes inside our parentheses. So 7w to the fifth divided by 7w to the second leaves you with w to the third power, because the 7 divides out to a 1. Bring down our minus sign, and 35 divided by 7 leaves with a 5, and w squared divided by w squared is just 1. So we have 7w squared times, there's the multiplication right here, w to the third minus 5. Example 2, let's take a look at the coefficients first. It appears the 8 and 6 have a 2 in common. Take a look at the a's. Well, they have an a to the first in common. Then we'll look at the b's, and they have a b to the first in common. Then we will draw our parentheses and actually divide this and this by that common monomial of 2ab. Okay, so 8 divided by 2 leaves us with 4. a to the second divided by a to the first leaves you with a. b divided by b is just 1, so I don't need to bring that down. Bring down the minus sign. And 6 divided by 2 is going to leave us with 3. a divided by a is 1. I don't need to bring that down. b squared divided by b leaves us with a b. So the factored form of this binomial is 2ab times 4a minus 3b. Those are the two factors. Factor 1 factor 2. So I have a monomial factor up at the front and a binomial factor in the back. Factoring is not limited to just binomials. We could factor out of a trinomial. And let's take a look at the first part of each term here, the coefficients. 
Uh, my recommendation is if your leading coefficient is negative, you want to factor out a negative. Uh, the 2, the 14, and the 6 all appear to have a negative 2 in common. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2. And the g, uh, the, I have a fourth power, second power, and a first power here. So the most I can take out is a g to the first power. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to divide each one of these by my greatest common monomial factor of negative 2g. All right, the first one, negative 2g to the fourth divided by negative 2g leaves us with positive g to the third. Negative or negative is a positive. When we come back and do the second one here, we have the positive value negative, which is going to leave us with a negative or a subtraction. 14 divided by 2 is 7. g to the second divided by g to the first leaves us with this g to the first, or just g. Again, here I have a positive divided by a negative, so that's going to leave me with a negative or a minus. 6 divided by negative 2, or 6 divided by 2 is going to leave us with a 3, but g the first divided by g the first is just 1, so I do not need to bring a 1 down. So here are my two factors, negative 2g, and I have a little times there, and a trinomial factor of g cubed minus g, 7g minus 3. For example 4, we're going to factor out a binomial. Now it looks like it's already in factor form because you have a little times right up here in the front, and you've got a little times right here in the back, but connecting those two is a subtraction in the middle. Since that subtraction is kind of standing out in space, basically connecting the front and the back, it's not really factor form because factoring means you should have items multiplied together, not added or subtract. But what we'll notice is this first term right here has a x plus 4 binomial, and the term in the back also has an x plus 4 binomial. In other words, those two terms have a common x plus 4 binomial. So what we're going to do is divide the entire x plus 4 out of the problem and then leave whatever's left over inside. So what we're going to do then is go back to each of these terms and divide by x plus 4. What happens in this first one is the x plus 4 is cancel, leaving a 2x left over bring down the minus sign. And the second one, the x plus 4 is also cancel each other out, leaving the 3. And you bring down the 3. So instead of having a monomial and binomial factors, we have a binomial times a binomial. And that is fully factored. For this next one, we're going to factor by grouping. You can see we have four terms here. And this is where we get into undoing our uh, old FOIL format. Uh, quite often, you can just group the first two together and group the second two. So let's find the GCF, or the greatest common factor, of the first two. So the first two here have a GCF of x squared. So we're going to factor out an x squared. So x to the third divided by x to the second leaves you with x to the first. Bring down our plus sign. And 3x squared divided by x to the second leaves us with just 3. Bring down our plus sign here. Looking at this one, these two have a greatest common factor of 5, so bring down a 5. And divide each of those by 5, so 5x divided by 5 leaves you with just x. Bring down the plus. 15 divided by 5 leaves you with a 3. Now this thing is not factored completely because you can see I still have a plus sign that is connecting the front and the back. But you may notice that the front has an x plus 3 factor, and the back has an x plus 3 factor, which means I can factor the entire x plus 3 binomial out. So that's an x plus 3 in common. And then when I divide an x plus 3 out of both, so divide an x plus 3 out of the first one, that cancels, leaving an x squared. And I'm going to divide an x plus 3 out of the second one, that cancels, leaving just the plus 5, or the positive 5. And now I have a multiplication connecting the first and the second terms. So there's my two binomial factors. Now it's fully factored. Here's another example of uh, factoring by grouping. So let's go ahead and group the first two, group the second two. And the first two have a y in common, so I'm going to factor a y out. That leaves me with a y plus 1 left over. So I'm dividing both of these by y to get that middle number. Bring down the plus sign. The second two have an x in common, so I'm going to factor an x out in front. I'm going to divide each one by x. I'm left with y plus 1. 
Now, this is still not fully factored because I still have that plus sign in the middle, but each one has a common factor of y plus 1. So I can factor that out as a common factor, y plus 1. And what's left over is when I divide them out, those two will cancel out, leaving the y and the plus x left over. So we have a y plus x factor left over. Okay, for this one, we're going to talk about factoring completely. We're still going to use grouping. Um, we're going to show you what happens if you don't factor completely if the instructions tell you to do so. So we're going to group the first two. And the second two, I'm actually going to group the negative. Anytime there's a negative on that uh, first part of that second term or second group, uh, you remember you want to factor out a negative there. Uh, so let's take a look at the first one. I got a 6x squared and a plus 12x. They appear to have a 6 and an x in common, so I'm going to take a 6x out. So when I factor a 6x out of this one, I end up with an x by itself. When I factor a 6x uh, out of that one, I end up with just a plus 2. Now in the second grouping, I can see that they have a 10 in common, but I, they also have a negative in common. But even if this was a positive back here, I would still factor out uh, the negative just to make sure that the grouping here matches the second grouping. You want those two groups to match. So I'm going to factor out a negative 10. So negative 10. When I factor a negative 10 out of the first group here, I end up with a positive uh, x. When I factor negative 10 out of the negative 20, I end up with a positive 2. So you can see now we have matching binomials here, which means I'm on the right track. But I'm not done yet because I don't have a times in the middle. I actually have a subtraction. So I'm going to factor out an x plus 2 of both these terms, so x plus 2. And when I do that, this will cancel, this will cancel, leaving just the 6x minus 10 left over as the other binomial factor. So 6x minus 10. And since these are connected with the multiplication now, I'm fully factored. Uh, or I'm almost fully factored. There's one thing you've got to be careful of here. We did say factor completely. This word right here, completely, will sometimes throw students off. If you look at this second group here, the second factor, uh, we have a 6x minus 10. Well, the 6x and the 10, or the 6 and the 10, still have a common factor of 2, which means you can factor a 2 out in front. So factor a 2 out in front of your entire factored form. And basically, you're just taking this part dividing by 2, this part and divided by 2. Since there was a 2 still inside, you did not end up factoring completely. So that 2 needs to come out in front. So anyway, 6x divided by 2 leaves you with 3x. And negative 10 divided by 2 leaves you with negative 5. And since there's nothing else I can factor out of the first binomial or the second binomial, since I brought the 2 out in front, this is the fully factored form.